previously on Joe Schmo 2. Ingrid Weiss and Tim Walsh arrived and started looking for love. This is a trip. Okay, what did we get ourselves into? <laughs> and immediately, Ingrid got suspicious. How did they find you? We just told him his love on the way. What? I'm like, oh my god, it's all over, the show is done. Tim got to know the real Bryce. I don't know how he passed that psychological exam. Rita got plastered. OK, that, that's Rita. Hey, he's not a Jew. And she's drunk. And then was sent packing during the pearl necklace ceremony. Your neck is bare, and so is your place in his heart. Ingrid's suspicions began to rise. Did you guys know about this speech? And the entire show was put in jeopardy. I thought I was on, like, the Truman Show. She's raising doubts in front of Tim right now. She's going to grill Cammy in front of Tim. Will Ingrid figure it out? Find out tonight on The Joe Schmo Show. Two people looking for love in all the wrong places. But nothing could be more wrong than this. Meet Tim Walsh and Ingrid Weiss in search of romance on a reality show they don't know is fake. Their entire world created by an army of writers, producers, and actors, recorded 24 hours a day and put on national television. This is Joe Schmo 2, starring 11 actors. Tim Herzog as Austin, The Bachelor. Valerie Aslan as Piper, The Bachelorette. Jonathan Torrance as Geralt, The Gotta Be Gay Guy. Natasha Legero as Rita, The Drunk. Kevin Kirkpatrick as Bryce, The Stalker. Jessica Makinson as Eleanor, The Weeper. Steve Mallory as Ernie, The Heir. Gretchen Palmer as Ambrosia, The Bitch. John Huertas as TJ, the playa. Jenna Speaker as Cammy, the moron. And me, Ralph Garman, as Derek Newcastle, the pompous host. All performing for the two people who think it's real, Joe and Jane Schmo. This is Joe Schmo 2. Did you guys know about this speech? Because oh, well, 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 well. We found right away that we'd come across the quintessentially, you know, sort of perceptive, skeptical, prying, you know, uh, intelligent woman in Ingrid. And the speech sounded rehearsed. Yeah, it's this is right one of the things she's everything. picking up on. It's not anybody's fault. The two of you, you guys both had, like, really? full-on speeches prepared. Well, I... She wasn't just sort of sitting on it. She was voicing it openly in front of Tim. We... I thought I was on, like, the Truman Show. My gut right now is to get Tim out of speech. I know. I know. We have big, big shit coming that is so unbelievable, and she's so all over us. But she suspects. <laughs> and we're on day two, and I'm worried about 13 days. And they had a close interview her and ask her if she's feeling uncomfortable and she wants to leave the show. Can we reel her back in and make her think it's real? I mean, I get the feeling with this girl with something. all the hypersensitivity Everything. that it's always something, you know? Let's just get rid of her. I think we have Victor. The, the, the mistakes and the changes so far we'll, have been really if tiny. If we start rewriting the script now, we have the we'll chance make of it, really we'll fucking make it up a mistake. much bigger problem we'll tomorrow. Reel her back in to believability, which is what our job is in every moment of the show. As Tim and Ingrid are locked in their bedroom sharing their daily thoughts, the actors sneak away and meet with the producers to plot out the day. You're all being a little too guarded. I wouldn't just let her keep tossing those things out and playing dodgeball with her. I mean, you just gotta, you got be honest about your feelings with her. We can't let her corrupt Tim. And, yeah. and last night was the first time that she started raising suspicions with him in the room. And I don't think, it wasn't we again. again. We don't want that to happen again. So keep going, keep and faking. Deny, so deny, keep denying it. Her. Keep yeah. denying it. <laughs> so she's like the spawn of Satan. Well, my freshman year, I was voted most likely to walk in through the exit, and they have a picture of me <laughs> seriously walking in through the exit of the library. No! You know, there's 2,000 kids in my school. Let's say, I don't know, less than a dozen picked for something. It's not bad. <laughs> they don't give us much to talk about. We already talked about it all last night. <laughs> you talked out? I don't think so. What? I said, you talked out? <gasps> My character being a B-I-T-C-H, I get the signal that I can go ahead and I can say whatever I feel. He says, you feel it, you say it. Don't walk around it, don't back off, give it to her. I was voted most likely to succeed. Oh, wow. Wow. And best dress. Right, 
And best dress. And best dress. Nice. You could still win that award from this group here. Really? Most I'm liking you more now. Most likely to become president. Were you liking me less for yes, real? Yes, I was. Why? Anyway, <laughs> we'll go there later, okay? <laughs> when she started snipping at me at lunch, I knew I was going to have to do the old conflict thing, which I hate to do, but it has to be done because I'm not someone to let someone be making side comments about me and not bring it up. Really Would you like to uh, go grab a drink with me? Sure. See everybody. I'm not moving. I just woke up this morning just really irritated, you know? Well, with what? Well, I don't want you to be irritated. Well, this is a game, okay? Right. And you're just like fucking killing it. You know, you're paranoid of a lot of things and it's irritating. I was so excited to be the first one to have some sort of conflict in the house. Um, and it didn't surprise me that it was me and Ambrosia. You know, it's, it's fine to question stuff, but shit, man, it's like, I just can't tell you, it was just, it's irritating. Now, this whole situation is very contrived for me. And it's, it is contrived. Do you see what we're doing? Do you see what's around us? I mean, that's... I know, what and did I you, realized... What did you expect? I had no you're idea. You're signing thousands of papers for what reason? You know what I mean? It's like... I know. You're right. No, you're right. We had to jump through fucking hoops. I can't do confrontation. I'll back, you know, I'll back somebody up, but I'm not going to be the one to start it. Oh, I can't. It makes me I'll back really uneasy. Up. I'll back you up any day. I'll back you up into a corner. <laughs> Definitely, Ambrosia was, she was light in the wick. I don't know what is real and what's not, and it doesn't, it doesn't, I'm playing the game. I know I'm real, so it's like that's all that matters to me. She's looking up and down, and she looks you right in the eye. She doesn't play. She's like, are you lying to me or not? To make your experience better and to make my experience better, I can tell you that I will ease up on that and keep it to myself if it comes up yeah. again. I'm, I'm down with that. I truly am. The conspiracy theorist to me will never be gone completely, but I'm here to have fun and I'm here to have an experience and it really doesn't matter. If there is some, some bigger scheme to humiliate me, then guess what? I kind of got to let go and, and let it happen. Coming up next on Joe Schmo 2. It's our last you night. Know, hold on. You went to sleep last night? No, hold on. And later, someone's going home in the most outrageous eviction ceremony yet. Something. And you can't get past five seconds without her opening her mouth. Yeah. Just play it. It's so fun. We should play it. More than five seconds without Ingrid speaking, you have to drink. Hey, man. Um, so this fool tried to hypnotize me last night, right? The night before, TJ said, you know, he had ha was having trouble sleeping. Um, so Bryce, the Dr. Doodle is, decides to try to hypnotize him. How many beers did you have last night? Four or five. That, that's what puts your ass to sleep. Probably. I was nervous. It was a little scary. Me and Bryce had to convince Tim to basically let Bryce hypnotize Tim and I. I want to fuck with this dude. Yeah, let's fuck with him. Because he falls for anything. He's like a little kid. So we we'll try to get him, we'll get him to try it on it, see what happens. TJ sort of brought it up, so I thought that was more natural than me trying to introduce it. So TJ just sort of brought it up, yeah, Bryce can hypnotize people. I was telling him how I slept really good last night. And, uh, because you hypnotized me. And he said he's had trouble sleeping too. That's one of the easier ones. He said it was the beers. So God, what do you think? No, actually, the, be the beers actually make it, would make it even harder to hypnotize him. So that just means that it worked even better than I thought. Or the beers helped him sleep. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm... And I'm like, okay, you're just, just stop it with the voices in the head, please. Have I you ever been hypnotized? No. Because I was hypnotized when I was a kid. It stopped me from sucking my thumb. And then... And it worked? How'd that mm -hmm. go for you? Yeah, it worked. Okay. So me and TJ just having a little poke and a little fun at uh, Dr. Cruiser. And uh, he tried to hypnotize us. All right, this is an easy one. All right. All you're gonna do is watch this, all right? Watch the uh, end of the pen there. Okay, just look really closely at the end of the pen. You have to really concentrate. And I'm gonna start using a different voice. And you're relaxing. And we're gonna start counting backwards from 20. You can't, you can't look away. Counting from 20 to 19 and the voice and taking it so serious and I'm just, Sitting there in my brain, I'm just like, what a douchebag. Whenever I say the word dog paddle, you'll have to itch. 
and scratch. You're watching the pan. <laughs> I can't fucking do this. This is some bullshit. <laughs> I don't feel nothing. Like. I, yeah. You feel anything? That's because no. I. You were relaxed. You should have seen both of your eyes, though. Seriously. You know what? I can tell that you were hypnotized. No, no, I hypnotized. I saw your your pupils. Your pupils were. I hypnotized you, and I'm like, you're right, pal. You got me. You you got me. Thanks. You know, I'm gonna stop biting my nails now too. You're the best. It worked. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it worked. Okay. We'll test it. We'll test it later, and then we'll see. We'll see then. I think Tim bought it. He just thought it was insane, I'm sure, but I think Tim totally believed that I believed I could do this. The, the final ceremony, he's gonna go dog paddle. We're gonna be like, <laughs> I wouldn't I do that. See, I can't use it for unethical purposes like at the eviction. Well, it's like superpowers. You know, you have to use them for good. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a superpower, but it's just something I learned. Okay. I convinced Tim to uh, let's mess with Bryce and make him think that he hypnotized us and let him live with that satisfaction for a minute and then just blow the wool off, you know, blow the cover off of it and in front of all the other people. Every time he you says it, you're going to start. Says it. Yeah, oh, God, yeah. No, no, because he's. Oh, God, yeah. Being open to possibilities. All right, to be open to possibilities. That's mine. Ching, ching. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. 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 La, 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 la. My character wanted to test his powers and, and make them itch over dinner. And I think the subject was the uh, question going around the table was what, what was the, what, what's the thing you would least want to do for love? Probably what would like, be your worst nightmare activity that you just wouldn't want to participate in at all? The foot lick of love. <laughs> <laughs> like that would be gross. <laughs> Toe jam on toast of love. Forget it. Like, any germs? Oh, I'm not this really. This might be the only time I cry. <laughs> Maybe they'll let us go out to the pool and just and dog paddle. You didn't tell me what your views on the Iraq thing is. So the first dog paddle came out, and I heard it, but TJ didn't hear it. So you know, I gave one of these. I was only two seats away from the cruiser, and I'm trying to get TJ's attention. Like he he said it. Don't call I'm me sorry, hiding. you started it, you started it. My biggest nightmare? Mm -hmm. Bryce, you bring out the lights? It's your, your turn, Bryce. It's your turn. What's the one thing you wouldn't want to do? You have to put fish on your I already said I wouldn't, I wouldn't want a dog paddle. Dog paddle? You really can't swim? <laughs> no. I thought you oh, said you okay. wanted to uh, Bryce got this really great sense of accomplishment from that and belief in his powers. Um, Three, I'll bring some fish for everybody. Okay, you're a fish man. Sounds great. Bryce gets this really happy look on his face because he's convinced that he is now a master hypnotist. Well, unfortunately, it did not end so well. It works. How does it work? Because it worked already. How did it work? It worked How did already? It work already? What are you talking about? You were itching this earlier when I mentioned that my least favorite thing would be to do a dog paddle for love, and you were itching. Look what, what you're both doing. <laughs> Did he hypnotize you guys with your do you feel, knowledge? Do you feel itchy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. You guys knew I that he hypnotized you. Right, you right, you said, I don't know how that happened. All right, here, I check this out. We said I'd be hypnotized. Yes, listen. No, no, no. You don't want to be hypnotized. Oh, hold up, hold up. Hold up. Let me tell you something. Let me tell <laughs> you guys something. He doesn't, he wasn't, he'll tell you right now he wasn't hypnotized. Ask him. No, I, we, I was definitely not hypnotized. And when you said dog paddle, I remember saying you were going to itch. Right, so we already talked about when you said you were going to do it, we did it. We were just fucking with you, pal. Sorry. Bryce got very emotionally affected by that and very upset. And suddenly it really wasn't that funny anymore. I'm not adamant. You put me on the defense initially when I just simply. I told you upstairs it didn't work and you were so like, yes, it did. Okay. You'll see. TJ, it worked. It's our last you know night. What? You went to all sleep last night. Table. No, hold on. You went to <laughs> sleep last night. No, hold on. You went to sleep last night and you guys were both itching each other earlier. And that's all I'm saying. But I'm not, saying I'm, a, I'm not saying I'm a other. genius. I'm not saying that I made anybody's mind go crazy by I, hypnotizing them. I'm just saying it was so a simple angry. Because you. Because he's passionate. Don't, don't let him get to you. Don't let him get to you. Just let it go. I think Bryce is, is a lot more sensitive than the rest of the guys. So we really have to be a little more careful about making him the butt of any jokes. Coming up next on Joe Schmo 2. I was trying to concentrate on one thing, then I got two things in my face. And later, the most shocking eviction yet. And now it's time for another Falcon twist.
Thank you, Montaco. Someone is going to get lubed up with tanning oil. From this point forward in your adventure, you'll all have the opportunity to be playing for some fabulous trips to exotic locales. For example, today you'll be playing for two round trip tickets courtesy of Orbits.com to Allegro Papagayo by Occidental, which is a breathtaking, all-inclusive resort in Guanacaste, Costa Rica. All meals, drinks, and most sporting activities are included. <laughs> now, speaking of trips, gentlemen, one of you will be taking a trip in just a few hours, right off the show. For tonight, Piper will be sending one of you home in her first eviction ceremony. Everyone now knows it's a game, and uh, the elimination process is for real. This group that we're in right now will not be together in three or four days. There's gonna be two people standing at the end. The falcon has spoken. <gasps> oh, Jesus! <laughs> like that? <laughs> you know, the bird flying in is really the surprise. I mean, this bird is huge. And what the trainer had ever mentioned to me is that this bird is insane. There's a perch. Yeah. That he's certifiably nuts and apparently suicidally depressed because during rehearsals he would come soaring down from the top of this mountain and just bam with the thud that you thought the thing had to have broken its neck. It was like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. It slid down the window, hit the ground, flapped around, apparently knocked senseless. Now I'm thinking, the bird's trying to kill itself, or it's so fucking stupid that it doesn't know that I've got a big piece of beef in my hand and it's supposed to land on my hand. So these windows are actually doors, glass doors. We're gonna open them up, and we're gonna put Derek in the center of the doorway, and that will solve all the problems. This time it flies just past me, now it's in the house. Now it's flying around in the house, we can't get it. Funny thing is, in the storyline, Derek and Montecor, the falcon, aren't supposed to be getting along also all that well. Derek's not too keen on this bird, and that has been very easy to play because this thing's been nothing but a pain in the ass ever since we started working with it. It uh -oh. fell. Yeah. Thank you, Montecor. Oh, dear God. <laughs> go. Go, let go. God, I hate this bird. But I think everybody has that fantasy about love. Just given your dating history, is that the kind of guy you would normally be attracted to? Immediately when I met him, I was like, no, because he's not, he's too attractive for me. It's not the kind of guy I would look at. You're pretty too. I'm not saying. Look at your boobs, man. Sorry. Here I am. Meet Bertha and Louise. You named them. Like you have a I'm named yours. Come on. How about Baskin Robbins? Oh! Oh! That is he named them Baskin Robbins because that's where Cammie works. She's actually the head cake designer, but she doesn't scoop anymore. We all have mental pictures of past lovers frozen in our mind. Like the way the sun reflected off her hair, or the way she crossed her legs, or the way her skin would glisten when you drizzled vegetable oil. <laughs> well, it's not important. Anyway, today you'll be forming those images in Austin and Piper's minds in a game we like to call Strike a Pose. Now, one by one, I will be calling your name. You will come up to me and randomly choose an envelope from this basket. Then you will take your positions. When I say go, you will need to replicate the pose that's in that photo. The person who holds his or her pose the longest will receive two round-trip tickets to Allegro Papagayo by Occidental. Gerald, we will begin with you. Choose an envelope. We, we wanted to make sure that Ingrid got one of the harder poses so that she would drop out, and we would award this prize, which was a, a trip to Costa Rica, to one of our actors. I just don't want number four. Ingrid! All right, saving the best for last, I see. That's all right. So when it came time for me to select out of the out of the hat, there were only two remaining poses, and I oh god, I just hoped I wasn't gonna get the one that Tim ended up with. And I pulled number four. Well, number four was ridiculously hard. Are you effing kidding me? Who drew this? 
Keep in mind, this is for a trip to Costa Rica, all right? I always love outside games on Joe Schmo because I'm usually wearing a suit that's wool and it's about 180 degrees outside. So I'm, I'm uh, balls deep in sweat and I'm, I'm desperately trying to get this right. Are you set? Go! Oh my goodness, my boobies are gonna fall out. <laughs> oh, no, I don't need that distraction. <laughs> I was supposed to go out first and really mess with people. Totally TJ out. is out. I'm out. You just stay on that one. All right. Ernie is out, everyone. What's wrong? What's wrong? Oh, Cammy is out. Cammy is out. Are you excited there? Very excited. I'm going to Costa Rica. The Cammy came, and we all know who Cammy is by now. <laughs> I was trying to stay focused on one of the squares of the pool and just concentrate on one focus, just one thing. Then I got two things in my face. Oh, I, can't. Oh. Ah. I can do it. I can do it. Baskin Robbins right there, and I, you know, I just lost it. Ah. 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 That's when I ended up in the pool. Can we go up by them? Ingrid, do you want me to help you? I was able to go mess with Ingrid, trying to get in her head and trying to be, I could really be more, be overtly TJ. Let me see. Let me see. Um, Ingrid, do you like tea? <laughs> Have you ever tasted Puerto Rican tea? Have you ever seen a Puerto Rican tea bag? I did hear TJ as he was exploring the island somewhere around my navel. Love this. This beautiful blonde hair on her stomach as it glistens from the sun. It's like peach fuzz. I think it's, it's beautiful. It's like peach fuzz. Ah. I would love to rub that fuzz off your peach. She just giggled and laughed, and I got my face like right up on her boob. Costa, Costa Rica's like right over here. I'm not touching it. I think Costa Rica's right over here. Oh, no, I would never lick her. All right, it's two people. Who should I pick on? The irony was not lost on me that the final two contestants were Ambrosia and I, considering the um, conflict that we had had earlier in the day. She is. Uh -huh. she is You're sweating. She doesn't over. have to do anything. She's got to She's yeah, her her day. Day. I can't do She'll be her. there for two days. <laughs> It's okay for me to lose this one because I really don't want to set myself up as being the person that is going to win all of these events and gather any more scorn from Ambrosia. Coming up next on Joe Schmo 2. Here it is stored in casks like these. Also, people who make barrels are called coopers, and most of the barrels are made from French oak. I'm done now, okay. And still to come, someone's going home in the most unbelievable eviction yet. Derek took us out to this group date to the winery slash garage. Now, you may or may not know, but the palatial estate in which you're staying is not only a lovely home, but also a working winery. We traveled out to the on-site winery, which I'm sure in season must be something. So we're starting up here where the wines themselves start in the vineyard. Sadly, it kind of looked like a graveyard more than a vineyard. Just a quick tour of the actual room where they ferment the wine. It was a garage with some barrels in it that said, uh, basically said wine on it. I don't, you know. Um, if he misses a beat, I'll help him. Oh, please, feel free to jump in, Ernie. Ernie was correcting Derek a couple of times and, and just interjecting and really taking over the show as far as what we should be looking for, things like that. Here it is stored in casks like these. Also, people who make barrels are called coopers, and most barrels are made from French oak. I'm done now, OK. I think that rubbed Derek uh, the wrong way, stole, stole his thunder a little bit. So let's go outside. We've got some wines already open for you. We can all taste a little. How about that? When you pour, the French pour like this, and they'll pour in and out. That's called the punt, and it's meant all to All right, then, let's go taste some wine. What do you say? Eventually, we sat down at tables, everyone, for uh, the wine tasting. We'll start with a Chardonnay. Now, the Chardonnay is named after the grape. Nothing was too specific in terms of vineyard or um, year. It was all the basics of Chianti, Cabernet. <laughs> they might as well have just said, here's red. And something very different from red is white. Ladies especially enjoy this wine, and some of you softer gentlemen as well. 
So, what I'd like to do is pour you some of this. We've got it nicely chilled. <laughs> the drama at the wine tasting began with Austin's extra attention that he was giving to Cammy. Stick your nose in the glass. Mm -hmm. I was told the day before that, you know, pay more attention to Cammy. Making a play at her affections in, uh, in front of those other women, I just thought it was kind of tacky. Not because I was jealous, but because I was really concerned about the effect it was going to have on these other two girls. And the tension was growing. OK. <laughs> We knew there was going to be an eviction ceremony. Uh, so I knew I had to put forth the effort to talk to her and get to know her a little bit better. And I think the other guys felt that urgency as well. Why are you here? For the experience, for fun, and meeting people. I mean, this is, that's how I... Remember when we talked, the first time we ever talked, we talked about how everything happens for a reason. And I said, I think things happen for a reason. And, and he couldn't finish the sentence. Like, it just got choked up like that. It was so gross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like I'm here for a reason. <laughs> you break my heart. You're so sweet. Do you believe in love at first sight? Yes and no. I think that you two really yes, need to yes. get to know somebody. But why yes and no? What's the yes part? I think that there's like attraction at first sight, like a physical attraction. Mm -hmm. But I think that the love part is something that comes with time. You have to guess in order which one was. <laughs> Close, your Close, your Close your eyes. Close your eyes. I thought it would be funny if we played this little massage game. We'd each give him a, a, a little rub and see if he could figure out who it was. I mean, it was a little bit camp counselor childish, but please, this whole experience is a little camp counselor childish. Time's up. Here comes Rubber Downer number five. And of course, Gerald thought it would be so funny if uh, he also massaged Austin. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> it's just some of those lingering moments, you know, like he massages them just a little too hard and maybe a little too long and maybe kind of sneaks the feel of the pecs. My favorite explanation so far, and I think that the, the one that Tim's buying. The Gerald, I've never met anyone like him yet, but I don't think he's gay. I think he's Canadian. <laughs> Coming up next on Joe Schmo 2. That's what I got. That's what I got. I'm, I can't have my boobies fall out. <laughs> and still to come, the most outrageous tease of the most shocking eviction yet. The practice of stomping grapes into wine goes back to ancient Mesopotamia. You are all going to stomp some grapes yourself. However, you will be wearing only traditional Mesopotamian garb. <laughs> So everyone, get dressed and get ready to stomp some grapes. It was truly difficult for me to watch Eleanor's growing pain as Austin continued to make an effort to get to know Cammy. Okay. Whose boobs? Hers. I love those boobs. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Thank you. <laughs> give, you can't give lockets to everyone and then give special treatment to other people. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to take it off. Eleanor wanted to give Austin the, the locket back because she, she didn't think that Austin was sincere as far as giving everyone a locket. You can't give everyone a locket. Eleanor is a very sensitive, a very genuine woman. That sensitivity, unfortunately, came out in a very uncomfortable manner for her. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to take it off. I'm going to take it off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was really, it was really hard for me to see her affected by this experience because I really want her to have fun. Sorry, I'm overreacting. It's only a game. This is a game. I had some wine and I'm sorry. It's just a game. We're just having fun. Okay? Okay, don't worry. Come here. Eleanor is just kicking herself out the door. Um, with the, the whole crying episode. Maybe she was drunk. Well, that's what Rita did two days before, and she's, you know, she's flipping burgers someplace in Illinois right now. I have a feeling that he can crush a lot of grapes with you. Yeah? Yes, I do. Awesome. The grape stomp a thon is the chance for um, Gerald to introduce his aqua socks. Can I, I, I'm not even joking, can I take like 45 seconds and just run and grab my aqua socks? <laughs> 
Geralt's character has a bit of a germaphobe, which I'm not in real life, but I spent six months before the show started with germaphobes, just kind of getting inside their head. I hope those aqua socks were I worth were the rest of us standing Geralt, here in the freezing cold. Really Feet are like a rickshaw for germs. Yeah, I'm not like... getting in the same vat as him. I don't Why want some sort of infection. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's where things get interesting. For a little lone time on this special date, both Austin and Piper get to choose which one of their suitors they'd like to have join them in the grapes with. Then the rest of you can sort of pair off as you see fit and make room in the other vats. Piper, who would you like to have join you in your grape vat? <laughs> we have a volunteer. Tim. Thank you. I'm in. Oh, Tim. I'm in. That's just by proximity, though. Damn <laughs> right. Austin, have you made your decision? Who would you like to have join you in your grapes? As much as I would like each one of you ladies to join me tonight, I have to choose Cammie only because she's wearing oh. the most stompable shoes. I was really affected by Austin's choice to see how hurt Eleanor was and still not select her to jump into the barrel with him. And go! So I'm left alone in my barrel and it just destroyed Bryce. He sat on the edge of his barrel and, and didn't crush for a while. Hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. The best part about it was that Ernie really enjoyed himself and he took his shirt off. I think that might have been something that, that he was afraid to do up until that point. I thought that was so cool. God! Ernie is a parody of Average Joe where he's smart and he's funny and he's educated and he's got some money, but he's also a little overweight. Now, Piper's character She's uh, like all the other shallow bachelorettes, where she says she just wants this smart, educated, funny guy. But the second I take off my shirt, she's turned off. <laughs> Give me a face. Come on. Here. Here. Bryce, he was by himself. He just sat there and sulked. So she thought it'd be nice if she went and helped him. <laughs> I got a lot of grapes left. <laughs> and I just lit up. and took her in my arms, and probably uh, the kind of clutch that would allow for the least amount of stomping and movement. <laughs> oh, wait, this is not working. It's not working. Stop. All right, let's just stop. All right, I'll help you do ours again. Go. Go Are you again. Kidding me? We'll see who can win. I was so crushed and, and just distraught over that. My legs are shot. It's just a fungus. There's a fungus among us. There is a fungus among us. <laughs> As they sort of danced a little circle of crushing around their barrel. Every time she would pass where she was facing me, I'd be enthusiastic and happy about crushing the grapes, like making it a place that she might want to return to. And then the second she turned a little bit away from me, I just, it was just, just the collapse that couldn't be helped. Oh God, he's so weird. what I think? <laughs> so weird. I think Bryce hates me. He definitely does not, Bryce does not like me. Oh. I want to know who wins. I mean, how long are you supposed to go? Isn't there a point where they're just all crushed? Your fell off. Seriously. Oh, don't I don't feel competitive with Cammie. We're not offering the same gifts. Cooler if I'm in America right now. <laughs> Cammie is making a move. I don't know if she, knows, if she knows she's making a move, but she is. Very good. I think that there's... I can't have my boobies fall out. If he wants a, a beautiful woman, who has uh, a sweet and kind nature, then go with Cammie. That's it. I love the person. Come on, that's good for you. All right, everyone, that's go. enough. That's enough. Well done, all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice work. I'm all done now. There will be an eviction ceremony for the gentlemen. Ooh. Piper will have to make her choice who to send home tonight. <laughs> Coming up next on Joe Schmo 2. The most shocking eviction yet. Welcome to the first Flame of Love eviction ceremony.
Love. It's why we're all here. But tonight, one of you will have to let go of love's warm bosom and cleave to rejection's cold shoulder. Welcome to the first Flame of Love eviction ceremony. Gentlemen, you may pick up your candles. As you all stand here now with your candles erect, you're on equal ground. But in a few minutes, Piper will take her flame of love and light the candles of those suitors who have inflamed her heart. The person whose wick remains untouched must leave the house and return to a life languishing in loneliness. Before Piper makes her decision, you will each have an opportunity to take one step forward and make a final plea. TJ, we'll begin with you. What's up, Piper? You know, I have one really big reason why you should pick me. I just feel like you haven't had the full TJ experience. Gerald. Hi, Piper. I love your dress. Um, I think it's safe to say that we don't know each other very well yet either, but I certainly get the sense from you that you could be the type of person that I would be looking for to start a special friendship with. So come on, girl, light my fire. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Tim. Hello, Piper. You know, we have, haven't had uh, much time to spend together, but today I thought it was a good start, and I look forward to continuing what uh, started today. So, thank you. Ernie. Piper, in my day-to-day -day life, I meet a lot of people, and it's, it's really rare that I meet someone as sweet and authentic and sincere as you, and I look forward to getting to know you better. Thank you. And lastly, Bryce. Um, um, I didn't know if I was going to do this or not tonight, especially when you didn't choose me to stomp grapes with. Then you came over and you helped me. So I, wanted, I wrote a poem for you, actually, already. I'm going to read to you. It's called Our Beginning. <laughs> Love is a many splendored thing, and this is our beginning. Two worlds once lived apart. No longer are we all a cart. Here, here was you, there was me, together two, we now make a we. Choose me, and you won't ever be sorry, <laughs> because we can go on a love safari. Take my hand, make me your fella, and I'll love you beyond plethora. <laughs> Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time. If you're selected, cross to Piper. She will dip your wick in her flame of love. But remember, if your candle is not lit at the end of the ceremony, you'll be asked to leave immediately. Piper, if you will. DJ, DJ, please present your wick. Thank you. Thank you. Tim. Tim, please present your wick. Thank you. Gerald. Gerald, please present your wick. It's right there. This is the final wick.
Price. Price, please present your wick. Thank you. Piper, would you care to address Ernie? Ernie, this was a very tough decision. And I want you to know that I spent most of the day thinking about it. The best thing I can say to you is that your wealth of knowledge is astounding. But for me, it's a little intimidating. And I think that there's a great girl out there for you. I just don't think that I'm her. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Ernie, do you have any parting words? Very blessed for having met the absolute best roommate I've ever had in my life. Yeah, pal. And for meeting all of these terrific people, Eleanor, with her, <laughs> she was awesome. It, it, the way you said it, dinner, I actually, I took off my shirt because you challenged your fears and I did the same thing, I had a great time. You guys, this has been an experience that I could never have achieved without everyone here, and I just want to thank you. It's fantastic. And on the upside, I'm not the last one, I'm not the first one out, so I guess there's no... <laughs> well, not technically. <laughs> you are the first man to be leaving, though. I'm just saying, you are. I'm very sorry. Okay. All right, honey. Piper has made her decision. Your wick is cold and so is your place in Piper's heart. And take your walk down the last chance for love trail of tears. Thank you. Cheers. Well, as each of these ceremonies passes, it gets more and more difficult to say goodbye to old friends. But gentlemen, tonight you can celebrate your victory. And the game begins anew tomorrow. Have a great night. Well, that was a really nice I felt choked up. It's good to have those of you who are still here. Congratulations. Here. Congratulations. It's getting a little more real, huh? Yeah. yeah. Next time on Joe Schmo 2. Are you joking with me? Are you being totally serious right now? Ingrid's doubts have the producers scrambling. We are doing exactly what we set out to do, which is throw shit that's disbelievable in her face, and she's picking up on it. I'm sorry, it's just hard. It's hard for me because yeah, it's, hard it's for me too. almost unbelievable. She can't be that secure in the fact she doesn't actually know. If we're not going to go for it, then get rid of her. If we're going to go for it, then let's go for it. I know what's going on.